All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carrie Stewart. I'm a registered dietitian with Spartanburg Regional Healthcare System in the Heart Resource Center. And welcome to our first Colorful Cooking at Home. We're really glad to have you here in this space, the kitchen, which is a really important part of our healthcare. And we are really excited to have Dr. Courtney Jones, who is one of our emergency center physicians, to start off this new name of this same fun, healthful, delicious dishes that you might find frequently. So Dr. Jones, first, I am very curious. How did you get into cooking? How long have you been cooking? Tell us a little bit more about yeah. yourself. Yeah, well, thank you for having me here. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, as an emergency medicine physician, I've seen a lot of chronic disease issues in the ER, whether it's high blood pressure or hyperglycemia. My journey started about 10 years ago when my daughter was born and I was home on maternity leave. So as one does, one watches a lot of Netflix and I started mm -hmm. perusing the Netflix documentaries okay. like Forks Over Knives. You're probably familiar with that one. Yeah. Game changers, things like that have come out over the years that have um, given us a lot of insight into how we can prevent chronic disease okay. because I really feel like in our country right now, we're very focused on treatment, mm -hmm. but I feel like prevention is where it's at. Awesome. And so learning about that, learning about plant-based eating has been kind of like a side passion of mine, nice. something that I try to share with my patients. But it's great to be here because I feel like this is a wonderful audience that we can share with more people in more than a five-minute time span. Yes. So thank you for having me. Yes, absolutely. So what are we cooking today? Okay, so this is one of my favorite recipes. It's a not tuna tuna salad. And because we have chickpeas and capers, it kind of gives that like fishy feel, uh -huh. but it's super healthy. Um, the only oil in it would be in the tahini, which okay. is considered fairly unprocessed. Yeah. So the, you know, as far as our health goes, the less fat we have in our diet, the better. So I feel like this is a really healthy option. It's really tasty because we have the maple syrup and the mustard. Yeah. Um, and it's really easy and I'm all about easy. I work night yeah. shift and when it comes to dinner, I try to do it really fast. My kids like it too. So I thought that's this awesome. would be an easy option to share with our group. Yeah. It's probably done in less than 10 minutes. So that's nice. I am really excited about this because I've tried a couple of different chickpea salads in the past and have not been a fan of them, but I love that this, even the recipe just says, even mash it with a fork, mash some yeah. of them with a fork. So you don't need many utensils, <laughs> which yeah. is really helpful. And like you said, it comes together quickly. So I am very excited to yeah. taste this. This is kind of my go-to when I haven't prepared something. I can just grab a can of chickpeas. Yeah. I have some of these things already in my fridge. Right. So um, hopefully our audience will try it out and like it too. Yes. So if anyone has any questions at any point for Dr. Jones, go ahead and throw them into the Q&A there and I will reach out to her, ask, ask them. I will be back and forth manning that and being up here just to help her out. So feel free to to ask. And we did want to talk a little bit about National Diabetes Month. So this is just the end of November. We're getting in right here at the tail end. And so would you consider this recipe good for someone that has diabetes? Yes. So I know popular idea is eat low carbs and as much meat and cheese and all that stuff because it's considered less carbohydrate. But the research really lately has been showing that if you can follow a low fat diet, mm -hmm. you can eat some carbs as long as they're whole carbs. So okay. differentiating between a bag of chips, which would be probably pretty simple and turn right to sugar in your body and spike your insulin versus whole grains like beans or sweet potatoes or even whole grain bread. If you're not eating a lot of fat with it, your body does not require as much insulin. So, so even in test tubes, even our animal projects, even as far as like 100 years ago, mm. how did they induce diabetes and insulin resistance? They gave them a ketogenic diet. And I feel like some of the audience wow. might be like, whoa, that's not what I was told. I feel like things are coming out. I've been certified in lifestyle medicine and the big push is you can eat a plant plantiful diet. You yeah. can eat whole foods. You can even eat carbs, but we want to stay away from those heavy meats, cheeses and things that would induce further insulin resistance because that is what leads to hypertension, diabetes, chronic coronary artery disease. Yeah, they're all connected, right? They are all Kidney. connected and so much of this stuff's re reversible. So if you're sitting at home thinking, you know, I can't control my blood sugar or my high blood pressure, or I have all these conditions. 
Many of them are reversible diets. So this is just one healthy option. There's a lot of um, online resources that are great. There used to be an app called Forks Over Knives, which is where I got this recipe. Um, for whatever reason, I can't find it anymore. But there are a lot <laughs> of recipes out there that are considered whole food plant-based. Well, I'm glad you saved it so that we can I know, do it yes, again. I brought it, so so. It, it can live again in, in uh, our world, which yeah. is great. Because yeah, it looks like an awesome recipe. And I feel like a lot of times in the mock tuna salads I've seen, they'll use the nori flakes or like the seaweed things. Mm -hmm. And that tends to be a little bit too fishy for me, but I am a caper fan. Yeah. I like the lemony, you know, so I'm very excited to try this. So yeah. we will wash our hands first and you know, we're all about some food safety and get started here. Um, we also have a couple of other fun possible gift ideas since the holidays are coming up to share with you as well. But like I said, feel free to type any questions in at any point and we will get to those. Yeah, and if you have any questions about chronic diseases or, you know, anything, it doesn't have to just be about this recipe and food. So. It's amazing how dry my hands are already. So if anyone has tips on that, <laughs> yeah, let me know. There today, that is for sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's kind of funny. I think um, last month it was, October, but I was making smoothies or something. It was um, yeah. 80 degrees in October when, and I was like, well, this actually turned out well because it's warm enough here in South Carolina to be able to make smoothies. I know. Having grown up in Ohio, I can tell you it's very, <laughs> very different weather in October here and there. Uh, all right. So where do you usually start with this? Um, I think we can start maybe chopping veggies first. Okay. So we'll start with the onion. I usually use maybe even just a half of an onion. If okay. I'm just using one can, sometimes I double the recipe, the recipe and I'll do the whole thing. But that makes sense. Yep. This Because all of these are plants, so this should stay good in your refrigerator for up to a week. Yeah. So... But it sounds like at your house, it doesn't last that long. No. It's <laughs> so neat spoonful after spoonful. Yeah. That's another nice thing about a plant-based diet is you can really eat till you're full because of the calorie density. Mm. So all these things um, are lower in calories. And so you can eat more and still not feel like you're gaining weight. Have you used other onions besides a red onion, or do you feel like the red onion? I feel like does the red onion best? gives a really good crunch to it. Okay. Um, the sweet onion's pretty good too. Okay. I feel like a regular onion may just leave you kind of with that taste in your mouth all day. Yeah. So that's true. Um, Vidalia is kind of my favorite, but I like red onions too for uh, color too, because they're yeah. Pretty. So foods that are um, colored, like a red onion, will have a lot more nutrition just generally speaking with vegetables too the more colorful your vegetable is the better it is for you as far as antioxidants so if you're judging at the store you know obviously iceberg lettuce for instance has the least amount of nutrition yeah. compared to like kale or spinach which is so much more vibrant so that's just kind of a little tip in general when you're picking veggies pick the ones with the most color and you could easily put this in a food processor too if you don't want to go by hand and cook uh, and cut every everyone. I still have never found a great way to cut onions, you know? Um, that is something that I, I feel like is a very personal journey for everyone, everybody. except for maybe classically trained chefs. But yeah. I have to admit, so... Like, so this is my messy way that I'm going to do it. But. Yeah, and that is A-OK. -okay. Yeah. This is something that I wanted to share with everyone since we're talking about this. It seems like a good time for it. Yeah. But uh, this is a little hand whole string food processor. And I got it as a gift. And I was like, oh, another kitchen gadget. You know, is this something that I really need? <laughs> and oh my gosh, if I don't use it all the time now for chopping up things like even nuts. So yeah. if we'll sometimes do a mushroom, walnut, taco meat type thing, oh, yeah. and it's great for chopping those nuts up that way. So I will, it, usually it takes like, if you want to just kind of quarter this up for me and then I'll um, just put it right into here and just show everyone. Yeah, sorry. That's all right. Perfect. Yep. Great. And we'll uh, 
I'm going to walk back there and let you I pull it, do the honor so that they can uh, see. It's really only about 10, 10 pulls, if that, and you're going to pretty much yeah. pulverize it. So I did just so we need no electricity for, for this and no battery. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So it's almost like um, a lawnmower. Exactly. And it's so funny you said that yeah. because we actually, we got some of those in some of our teaching kitchen spaces. Yeah, and we really also nice. had out. someone with hemophilia. So look, almost the yeah. same thing. Um, and he was very uncomfortable using a knife. So that oh. was great. We've had folks with tremors and, you know, possible Parkinson's. So they were uncomfortable, a little bit unsteady using a knife. So it's great for that. Yeah. It's great for kids. So yeah, if, <laughs> kids and eloquence. Yeah. Let's, let's avoid cutting, cutting anything if we can. Yeah, so. exactly. So um, not only is it a time saver, even if you don't have any of those things, but it really, I mean, works very quickly. I um, don't like the stickiness of garlic a lot. So that's one of the ways that I'll use it too is, but usually you need like at least four garlic cloves or so because you have to have enough volume in there to kind of get it yeah. to crank right. And I'm going to close it again so that we don't start to, to cry. Uh, so how long have you been plant-based, Carrie? So I would say at this point I am I am mostly plant-based. I don't want to say that I'm exclusively plant-based all the time. Um, but I have been on this journey for, gosh, six years. Yeah. Maybe more. Um, and it's just amazing. I I feel better. I have tried so many more foods that I don't think I would have otherwise. But there are some, I feel like you you win some and you lose some <laughs> in that, in any type of cooking. So that's yeah. why I really, when you sent this recipe over, it really spoke to me because I was like, oh, this is using some very different things that I've never put together, but it's easy. It is easy. And what you were saying about feeling better, I think that was the biggest thing that I noticed when I went plant-based. I was at home with a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a newborn. I told you wow. I started this, and so my daughter's 10 now, so it's been 10 years. Oh, man. I had a lot of energy, and everyone's like, how do you have so much energy, you know? Yeah. Not sleeping at night and all that, and the food made the difference, and you notice it even within a couple weeks. Yeah. So I think that's the beautiful part is you try something, and you you notice results really fast, and we've seen with some of our patients, some dropping their, H, um, their A1Cs within just a few weeks, dropping mm -hmm. their blood pressure within a few weeks, lowering insulin requirements. So really, it's in the food, and I feel like it's so common sense that in the medical community, we think it can't possibly be what it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it can take a little bit of effort, but, you know, that's why we are starting to do these <laughs> events more, is just to do that recipe sharing, the resource sharing because we can all use more uh, in our library. Absolutely. Yeah, sometimes people are just don't know what to cook. So this is an easy, I like because I can put it with a sweet potato. You can yeah. cook this for like 45 minutes and put this on top of it. And I add a little hot Hungarian paprika. Ooh. I like spicy. Or you can make it as a sandwich. Or if you are trying to get your veggies in and want to do it on top of a salad with a little dressing on top, yeah. that's really a good option too. So it's really versatile. Um, yep. Yeah. So I guess next we're going to do all of our sauces in this okay. bowl. So it calls for three tablespoons of tahini. And tahini, we've already stirred this because sometimes it separates a little bit. So you can see that consistency there. Very similar to peanut butter. So this is ground sesame seeds. If you have never had tahini or heard of tahini before, so you can see that beautiful like tannish color from those sesame seeds there. Um, and I admittedly did not check the ingredient list, so I probably should have, but hopefully it's just sesame seeds, <laughs> maybe sesame seeds and salt. So we can look at that yeah, in a second. Yeah, the less process you can do in general is better. And yes, the only ingredient is sesame seeds. Great. So okay. nothing, <laughs> the good rule of thumb is if you don't recognize it and can't pronounce it, it's probably not so great for your health. Yep, exactly. All right, so that's three of those one teaspoon of Dijon or spicy mustard. I usually use, yeah, a Dijon. So this is great. This is just a green wise Dijon mustard. And although I feel like in the ER, I'm more precise in the cooking kitchen. It's just kind of roundabout. That's good. Enough. Yeah. So 
Doesn't have to be perfect. One tablespoon of maple syrup. And that's okay because it's a it's only one tablespoon. So we're probably gonna serve what at least four people with this Correct. recipe. So one tablespoon divided by four is really not that much, especially when we've got the fiber from the veggies in there, from the chickpeas in there. We've got the protein from the chickpeas, and depending on what you put on top of it, whether it's or if you put it on a sweet potato, you've got more fiber there or a salad. Yeah, I don't there. think we should be as concerned certainly pure sugar is super refined and is going to spike your blood sugar mm -hmm. things that are a little bit um, more close to nature like maple syrup i guess it's better if you don't have any but sometimes some recipes need a little a yeah little sweetness and I, I don't feel bad when i use maple syrup um okay so now we have added the tahini the mustard and the maple syrup or agave whatever you have on hand um, we're going to go ahead and add to this our onion celery and then i really like pickles so i'm gonna cut up some pickles if you're not a pickle fan you certainly don't have to put um, pickles with it and i'm gonna put this on the side here because i feel like maybe i have even a little too much veggies um sometimes when i make this i just do a double recipe yeah so that works too yep it is calling for a quarter cup of pickles so there we go. That's probably good. Do you think that you could omit that if you were worried about your sodium or? Yeah, I think you certainly could. I don't think the capers have a lot of sodium in it. And I think that that is what gets the really um, good flavor. The okay. Flavor. So I think pickles are kind of a plus or minus. And some people just don't like pickles. So. Capers are located in the grocery store usually by the olives and the pickles. Yeah, and that then, may not be the one somebody has at home. That's true. Yes. And then tahini, I usually just go right to the international aisle. Yeah. That's usually where I buy, I always find some. <laughs> it may not be the most affordable, so you may want to check with your um the grocery store uh, folks to see if there's better place that yeah or another Sometimes place I can find it on it. sale and it's usually if on sale it's usually about seven dollars okay the thing is I mean that will last for like several recipes and yeah so I've heard some patients um or even other just friends talking about a plant-based diet and they say it's so expensive I could never afford to eat and I think people are very focused on eating organic when you think about eating mm. plant-based you think you have to eat organic and I think this would be a good time to mention that you don't have to eat organic. It's always better when you can, but anytime you're eating a plant over something either processed or an animal product, you're already doing yourself like a really good favor as far as your health goes. Right. So you don't have to buy the $4 organic lettuce. You can just buy regular romaine and that's okay. You just wash yeah. it really good at home. The way I envision it working in our bodies is that, you know, we're, we might eat that non-organic lettuce, like you said, but it's still full of all those anti-inflammatory compounds and the vitamins and the minerals that our body needs. So that is helping to combat those cancer causing substances that might be on the food from the, you know, from the lettuce or something like that, the pesticides, whatever. But it's still way better than a bag of organic potato chips. <laughs> so Correct. it's Correct. kind of that, like, as opposed to what um, someone has always phrased it to me that way. Like if someone's eating this, we always ask as opposed to what, <laughs> because Correct. It, you know, there's, there's balance in everything. Absolutely. And a lot of our animal products, even when people are trying to buy, you know, cage free this or organic that still, unfortunately, they're eating those same grains that have had pesticides on mm. them. Mm. And they themselves may have antibiotics and all that. So anyway, I guess the moral of the story is you don't have to buy organic. It's great if you can afford it, um, but it's just better to eat veggies all the way around. Right, right. So this is a teaspoon of capers. Right. I've just kind of like roughly chopped it. Okay, so you did chop it. Okay, that's good. Yeah, because they're kind of big. And... Yeah. Um, and so we're just going to mix this up a little bit. I like to put the tahini and stuff in first just because it's kind of thicker mm. um, and and using little bowls then you're gonna every time you transfer it over to a different container it kind of you're losing some of your product so to speak so yeah so it's gonna have this consistency and now we're gonna add the chickpeas okay 
Now, sometimes I mash it with a fork. Sometimes I use a um, potato masher. Mm. In this case, shall I put it in that little? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna, we want to try that try out that. again. Yeah. I'm going to get another little bowl here to dump our onion in because we're not going to waste this. Now I'm going to go home and make this recipe myself is what will happen with the rest of my onion. Oops. Yeah, I really like just how easy it is. You know, my my family, everyone asked, did you Grab it. raise your kids, you know, vegan or whatever? Okay. And, you know, I felt like that was a very individual sort of decision. So, yeah, I would typically when when they were growing up, I would make kind of two dishes. Like, let's say we were doing spaghetti and meatballs. So sometimes I would just do a veggie primavera okay. for me and I would do the meatballs and then I would add the meatballs on their plate. Yeah. Um, if we do tacos, you know, if it's beef or chicken, I'll make the meat in one and again, okay. the veggies in the other. And and so I feel like they have had more vegetables in their lives. Right. But I felt like that was kind of their decision when they got older. Although yeah. I know that many children can be raised on a plant-based diet and there's plenty of protein. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't so much of a concern for me, but um, but even now my husband eats meat, I guess, yeah. when we go out or whatever. Yeah. But he always raves and he says, it's so good. Your cooking is so good. I can't even tell sometimes that yeah. if it's a meat substitute or something else, he's like, this is better than it would have been if it were regular. Yeah. So if you're also thinking at home, like, you know, my whole family wouldn't go for it. Realize maybe it's a little bit more work, but really it's not that much work to have two skillets. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a little more dishes, but you can still do what you need to do for you without necessarily imposing on other people. Yeah. Yeah. I do feel like choice is important and people are very particular about their food. And so we want this to be a safe space to try something. And Absolutely. And, and then they may see how good you feel. Right. Or, oh, what good results you're getting with right. your health. And think, hey, you know, that's how a lot of people have exactly. convinced their family members. Mostly yeah. Mostly because... They like they like Here, the results. Let's try it exactly, yeah. and even just putting something like I don't know eggplant on the table for your kids, even if they don't take a bite of it, at least they know what it is and yeah. that it's a vegetable. And um, <laughs> that's unfortunately some things that some knowledge that kids are losing these days. It yeah. seems like so when everything's out of a box. That's All right. right. Yeah. So we are going to put I would say like half. Maybe you can roughly chop half of it, and then the other half you can have whole. Okay. Um, I don't know. Check out how much protein. I know everybody in America is very yeah. protein centric, which we don't necessarily have to think of our food is ca carbs, fat, or proteins. But I do believe beans have quite a bit of protein in and of themselves. Six themself. grams in about a half of a cup. And how many servings? Three. So and there's a half. three and a half so in the whole 16, can. So twenty you're basically something. getting at least yeah, at least six grams of protein if there's four servings here. Yeah, give or take. And I think we overestimate how much protein we need in general. So mm. the average person needs 0.8 grams per, per kilo. kilogram. Mm -hmm. yeah, Which I is, always have to think is that yeah. per, kilo, per kilo. So a person who weighs, let's say 50 or 60, maybe 60, 60 kilos, so 48 grams of protein a day. Yeah. So if you ate half this recipe, which I'll tell you is easy to do, you already have. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What, 15 grams? So to do some quick math, the way you figure out is take your weight in pounds and you divide that by 2.2. So a little bit of math, but yeah. easy math <laughs> to figure out how many kilograms you would weigh. Yep. And then you can multiply so. that by 0.8. Now, of course, if you're an athlete or you're doing super strenuous things, those mm -hmm. numbers may change. But for the average person, okay, so we've kind of roughly chopped that. Okay. I'm going to add this into it. And that's just for kind of a like texture. Okay. Yeah. Kind All of right. for texture. I had to stay and look, but I'll zoom in yeah. for everybody now. <laughs> and I like it because it has a crunch. Yeah. It has a little bit of sweet. It's definitely the tahini makes it savory. And then the pickles and the capers make it, you know, kind of feel a little fishy. Um, I know one of my favorite places we used to go on the Swamp Rabbit Trail during the summer. And there's a Southside Brewery. Yeah. But they have a couple options that are more plant-based. Something like this is one of it. And I have to say, I think I like my recipe better. Although theirs is pretty good. But they serve it on a salad. And theirs I've had as well. And it's a yeah. little spicy. It uh -huh. had a little heat to it. So I mistakenly got it for my daughter. And I was like, okay, this too is too spicy. spicy for you. But yeah. yeah, it was one of the better better ones I have tried. But 
Yeah, I really appreciate Feel like not quite there. from 10 years ago till now, there are so mm. many more options. Mm-hmm. We were in Europe this summer, and I feel like they're even one step further ahead. Mm-hmm. So almost every restaurant you go to has a plant-based option, which I feel like here, sometimes you just have to be vegetarian. Like you're going to yeah. have cheese or eggs. Yeah. And it's a little trickier, although always asking for some sides of veggies, that works too. Yeah. Out and about. Um, okay, so I think we have put all of the big things in here. Okay. Now, just a little pinch of sea salt and black pepper. Obviously, this is to taste. And then we're going to be done. And I know we were chit-chatting. So if you did this at home, you could probably knock it out in half, in half as much time. Yeah. What does our audience think? That looks pretty easy overall, does it not? Yeah. I don't know if we have any comments from them, but we would love to know what you think. And obviously, if you try it, hopefully you like mm-hmm. it. So, um, like I said, I like to put mine on sweet potato. We could also make a sandwich with it. We have a little tomato we can cut up. I don't know if you want to make a sandwich or if we just have sure. stuff for fun, but we can at least see what the presentation looks like in the end. Yeah, I would definitely like to try it both ways. So let me grab an extra spoon here. Is this one of those things where you feel like it tastes pretty good right after you make it yeah. or does it really need to kind of sit and marinate in itself I think it overnight? Tastes, oh, truthfully, it tastes better the second day. But definitely sometimes I'm hungry and I just, yeah. I just make it and I think it tastes really good the way it is too. What do you think? It tastes like tuna salad. Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe not 100%, but maybe 95 Like, it could it could pass in a pinch. And I'm not a big mayonnaise person, mm-hmm. so the tahini is actually surprising me because it really does, it tastes like mayonnaise, but you've got, it has a consistency of mayonnaise, uh-huh. but I feel a lot better using that than mayonnaise, even plant-based mayonnaise and all the other stuff. That's a lot of oil That's in one it. ingredient. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So it makes it a little creamy. I think that that's yeah. nice. Yeah. And then I see that you have some nice whole grain bread. Yes. I did get, so I usually get the thin sliced um, sprouted grain bread. Mm-hmm. So you do have to look for that word on your label. But there's a bit more research coming out now about how sprouting grains can actually help not only lower the amount of starch there because the grain essentially needs that energy from the starch to start to grow. So it starts to use some of that starch, lowering the glycemic index of the food. And then it can also actually help us digest it easier. We can get more of the nutrients out of it because it started to open. So I do look for that, but don't get to, those aren't super popular still. And some of them can be very pricey. So you can find things like sprouted brown rice that's been dried out again in a package, but it might be $8 for a whole a bag. Um, but there are some <clears throat> brands of bread that use sprouted whole grain flours now, and they're usually the same price as yeah, and that's I like others. Ezekiel bread. That's an option that's usually in the freezer section and can last a little bit longer, too. Um, that's true. And there's a lot of whole grains. I guess what we, in the plant-based movement, are going towards is, like, the least processed possible. Mm-hmm. You know, we had this huge surge in America of obesity and chronic disease, and a lot of it had to do with the food because it became readily accessible, was very, they figured out how to process and package and keep food for a long time with all right. the ingredients. We don't understand the names and how to pronounce them. And so that kind of shifted our focus, even against maybe back in the day, there was some meat eaten and potatoes, mm-hmm. but there were vegetables and at least it was a whole food. Right. Now everything is packaged and processed and yeah. hydrogenated. And and so, and we're seeing the effects of that with our yeah. patients in our community and just look around when you go out and about, yeah. you know, people are not in the state of health that they should. So right. just by making these easy switches to a more whole food plant-based diet, you don't have to go 100%. I think that's another fallacy is people think that, well, I could never go vegan, right? Right. But even if you go 80% and you put more plants in your diet, you're better than you were if you were going zero. Right. So trying some of these recipes, and I know you have a few more in the series coming up. Yeah. And so maybe this is something easy you can try at home. Yeah. I was going to say, I love this. I mean, I love it for its ease. I think we don't focus enough on some easy recipes in yeah. space sometimes or just or fast cooking recipes like this. So I'm really glad that we did this. And 
I think you've won me over with Yay. your tuna salad. Well, thank you. I appreciate no tuna it. Salad. <laughs> no tuna salad. No tuna tuna salad. That's right. So I'm going to zoom in um, so that everyone can see our beautiful sandwich here one more time. And then let Dr. Jones know if you have any other questions as well. I know this was pretty simple, so we didn't have any questions other than they already want the recipe. So Oh, great. <laughs> we'll pass that on. Um, yeah, some of my favorite go-tos are not that difficult, and I feel like you think you should make this big elaborate dinner, but sometimes the easiest things so with just some, you know, things that you have in your fridge are the best things. So, so I actually, I'm glad someone brought this up because I was going to ask you this. What do capers taste like? Uh, they do have a little bit of salt in them, so they're a little salty. They give that fishy flavor, um, so it's definitely like a different taste if you've never tried it. Um, but I think in this recipe, it kind of like lets us have that seafood taste without actually having any fish. Yep. I think it is got a slight lemony taste almost to it. It's much different than an olive, even though it comes in the brine yes. that way. I would say it does not like taste like an olive, olive no. because I am not an olive person. Um, it is really kind of unlike any other flavor I've ever had, to be honest. I yeah. think it is a, is it a, is it a flower bud? I think, technically. Is it going to say? No. Capers, no. Well, I just, I do know that there's not a lot of other ingredients in here, but capers, water, salt, and acetic acid. But yeah, I think you just kind of have to, it's like one of those tastes that you just kind of have to try and see what you think. Yep. Agreed. Um, and then we just got a question again about where to get the tahini. Um, so I got the tahini at our local grocery store here in the international aisle is usually where you can for sure find it. Um, some of your... I get it at Publix. I mean... Yep, that's where I got it. I paid about $6 for it. That's why I got that one and didn't check the label because it was on sale. <laughs> yeah, um, and usually they'll have, I can, if I see it on sale, I'll get two. You know, so I have it. Yeah, I know they um, had three different options there, um, but I know some of your other stores like Trader Joe's has it as well. Probably and Whole Foods, I, would I don't know about it's probably a, a hit or miss or a specialized item at some of your other stores like Aldi or Lidl that I, I don't yeah. think you can guarantee you'd be able to get it there, but you can also get it online too. So if you don't yeah. want to leave your home and you have everything else in there, except for maybe capers and, and, um, and I think it, it could potentially be good without the capers too. But like you said, you're not going to get that, that tuna E. Mm -hmm. I think it's something with maybe the capers mixed with the tahini that gives it that kind of fish flavor. flavor. Yeah. yeah. And this recipe calls for sesame seeds, I believe roasted unsalted oh no i'm sorry sunflower seeds um but sometimes i use sesame seeds just to give a little bit of a crunch i found some black and white sesame seeds that i'll sprinkle on top and i think it oh, looks pretty yeah. and gives it a little bit of a crunch so you know the nice thing about these recipes is you can omit you can add you can play around with it a little bit and it's all whole food and again if you were to switch to kind of a whole food plant-based diet pretty much guarantee you'd lose weight, your blood pressure would improve, your cholesterol would improve, and, and you'd have more energy, which I think is the biggest yeah. thing that many of us are lacking, is just the oomph to get out of the bed and, the, and get going. Mm -hmm. Also, chronic inflammation from all these processed foods make us uh, achy. And so yeah. by switching more to like a whole food diet, you're not going to have as much inflammation something that your doctor may test along with your regular panel is something called a CRP or a C-reactive protein, and that kind of measures whole body inflammation. And I think less than three is normal, but some of um, mm. my patients have, you know, levels greater than 15 and they hurt all the time. So mm. switching to this sort of diet is something that will overall lower the CRP as well. And you feel better, not so many aches and pains. I think that's something that we all would appreciate. So we are confirmed by one of our listeners that capers are edible flower buds. Oh, well, good for them for being on Google. Thank you. Yes, I know. Thank you for that. All right. Let's see. Anything else? 
No, but lots I of think... folks looking forward to trying it though. Good. So well, yeah. Yeah, I'm happy to share one of my easy favorites. Um, maybe next time we'll try something more in depth. But this is a, an easy go to if you just don't feel like cooking. It is. And I, I think that's especially if you're starting out, you may not feel like that. So um, but it, or if you aren't feeling well or someone in your house isn't feeling well, it's it's something easy. Like you said, once you've got some of these things, then, then you can make it again and again, again and again. Exactly. Yeah. It's super easy. Yeah. Um, and cost effective, I might add. I don't think all of these ingredients probably. I mean, how much is a can of beans? A dollar? It was a dollar. Yes, exactly. And it was probably the most expensive thing here is the maple syrup, mm -hmm. which is probably 10 or $12 for the whole thing. But obviously that's going to last you a long yep. time too. Yep. So you can make this recipe again and again at probably less than a couple of dollars for Yeah, meal. which is important. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Well, Jones. It was such a pleasure, pleasure to have you in here, here and talk food with another healthcare professional. So it's well, it's really great to have you and and um we appreciate everything that you do for our patients and, and our community here. Next month, we are very excited to have Dr. Paige Galt, who is an endocrinologist. She'll be doing two different recipes that are her favorites, as well as good wintertime recipes. So we're welcoming her. I believe it's Monday, December 11th. You can find that on SpartanburgRegional.com backslash events. And in the meantime, we will send out the recording for this along with the recipe. So give us a week or so um, and we'll be able to get that out to you. But thank you for joining us as well. So thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Yes. Good, easy recipe, especially in the middle of all the holidays too. Holiday so. <laughs> Good yes, holiday chaos Exactly. Recipe. Exactly. So like I said, I think we need more of these quick and easy recipes, but that's another question for you all. What what types of things would you like to see? Are there any foods in particular that you'd like to see us highlight in the coming year? We would love to hear that too, and we will be glad to get that for you. So thanks again. Okay, thanks.